What's going on everyone? Uh, welcome back to my channel and uh, this is the advanced racing and uh, also sail away. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to the sail away racing editor which is brand new on here. Still probably a couple bugs but we're going to hope that we don't run into any. Uh, I've made a couple races already. Um, locally and in, in, in my, my real life I sail on Lake Ontario so I made a couple races that are uh, near to my heart. Uh, the Scotch Bonnet Light Race is a race that I plan on doing in the future and uh, as well as the Lake Ontario 300. And I'm not sure if I'll do the 300 on a Pier on my Pearson 26 or if I'll try to crew for somebody else but that's usually a bigger boat race and uh, uh, this one's pretty cool. You circumnavigate Lake Ontario pretty much. I think you go from like Toronto. It starts in Toronto and goes Oswego up to this one island over towards the Niagara region and then back up. Uh, the Scotch Bonnet I can do in my boat though so that's pretty cool. Um, these are usually in June and July and uh, but we won't get into that anymore. They are published. They are public on the Sail Away game so um, if you want to race in these races you can join and uh, do a practice race anytime or you could join it for the uh, for when the real race starts in a few months. Uh, other than that, we're going to make a fake race right now. I'm going to kind of show you how you go about making a race. And uh, I've used Windy for this point. Um, if your race in particular is a real, real life race and you're kind of based off of it, um, look up the, for example, a local buoy near me would be Watoma Buoy Waypoint. I typed in there. And, you know, I can go, I can search it up and it'll give me the exact coordinates of where. Well, this doesn't, but it gave me it earlier. It'll give me the exact uh, waypoint of a buoy that you want around. Um, if not, you can use Windy, and you can kind of just, you know, you go here to your uh, distance and planning, and you plot a course. Let me get rid of that. And this will give you your latitude and longitude. That's what you need in order to... So, um... That's what you need in order to make marks in the game, or start line, finish line. Uh, so we go to the Sail Away website. There is a create... Um, sailboat race type of area there. I'm not going to go through that because you have to log in and I don't want my information stolen. But once you do log in you're able to add a new event. Obviously I can go back and I can um, edit my previous events. So for example if we go to let's go to the Scotch Mountain Light Race. I can kind of show you around here. So you can upload an image. I'll show you how we go about doing that. Um, but you name your race. You put in a little description. You choose what kind of boat you want to use. If you want to use all the boats or, you know, specifically one type of boat. Uh, what time the start is, it's all in UTC. Um, and then if you go to edit course, this is what I'm talking about right here. You need all your latitude and longitude points, so you need to be able to research that. And uh, make sure you're accurate with those points because it will get screwed up. And you want to test your course out before you make it public. Um, and we'll go about, I'll show you how to do that. Um, but there's another option over here. My my race is already made public, but there's usually when you're making a new one, it'll say make public. Don't hit make public until you go into the game and actually try it, which I'll show you. We'll, we'll, we'll go through that, and I can kind of show you how you do that. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to add a new event. Uh, we're going to do test race Sydney, because that's where I'm going to do it. Um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Uh, if you want to drag an image to this, I'll show you. You just put an image on your... Uh, this is for a Scotch Bonnet from Rob Reich. But anyway, you just take an image off your desktop and drag it over here. It's too big. Okay, well. How about this one? Yeah, we'll just put Ron Swanson there. <laughs> um, I'm going to use a 50-foot performance cruiser for the sake of this video. And... Um, Two, three, eighteen. Yeah, I'm not going to care about the date because you can do a practice um, start. And the reason I'm making this course uh, is kind of just go over the advanced starting techniques and racing procedures that we are going to go over later in this video. But I really quickly wanted to go over the editor first. Um, so you have all this done. You got your time set. I didn't do mine, obviously, but you go to edit course. Everything's blank. You need to 
put some points in here. So what I've done is I kind of got like a start line here, and uh, we're going to start somewhat into the wind, which this is supposedly where the wind's coming out of right now. And uh, so I got to go mark number two, and I'm going to take the latitude and longitude uh, longitude points. And what we need to do, I'm going to write all this down so we make it quicker. But I want to start heading south. Right, out, we're right outside Sydney Harbor, and uh, so two is going to be our port buoy, and one is going to pretty much be the committee boat, the starboard mark buoy. So everyone's going to start coming in like this. Uh, three will be our windward mark, and then we're going to have a downwind mark at four, and then we're going to finish coming up the same way um, with two on port and one on starboard. Um, so I'm just going to write down all this information on a piece of paper here. So my port start slash finish, because that's going to be the same, so we can just write that down, is number 2, which is minus 34 by 0 0.03, and 151 for the longitude, 151.28. Um, starboard start finish is mark number 1, so 34.03, 151.27, our windward mark is mark number three here, so you're going to write down your negative 3405 by a longitude bearing of 151.27. And then our downwind mark is going to be, let me write this down here, downwind mark. This is probably going to be a pretty long video because i got a lot to go over, and I didn't really want to make two videos. I need a 34.02 by 151 by 27. Wait a minute, one word. That's 27. That looks like a 1. And then back to the start finish line. So I used Windy to plot all this out because I'm not aware of any buoys out of this area, uh, Sydney Bay or Sydney Harbor. So I'm not really. Uh, too sure about anything over in that part of the world because I haven't been there. And we're a little bit south of Sydney Harbor, um, down by Botany Bay. I wanted to start over here, but for the sake of this video, I'm just really quickly doing this. Um, so we go back to our edit course and our port start line buoy. Here we go. So that was negative 34.03. And like I said, you just got to get on here and just practice with this stuff because it's a, for anybody who's not really experienced, it could be a little bit difficult. But if you got basic navigation skills, it should be fine. Um, like I said, windy, you just plot a point by hitting distance and planning. So I have a new point here. And you just click around, and it'll give you all these different points. Um, I'm not sure why that didn't show up. There we go. So that gives you, you know, latitude and longitude for all those points I just clicked on. Um, but anyway, moving on. Uh, starboard start line buoy. Negative 34.03. And then we have our windward mark, which we are going to round counterclockwise, I guess. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? So that's our windward mark, which was negative 34.05, I believe. And then 15129. Oh, shit. You have to hit, uh, if you want to add more than one mark, you have to hit save changes, and then that adds another mark for you. And then you can go back and hit this trash can and get rid of that mark if you don't want to. Uh, if you don't want that there, but yeah, it's kind of odd. You're like, well, wait a minute, I can only put one mark in. And I didn't realize it at the time, but then I hit save changes and it added another mark. Um, this one will go around counterclockwise as well. This is our downwind mark of negative 34.02. Not sure what I just hit there. O2 and uh, 15127. I'm just confirming these. Alright, so now it's the same information as before for your start line. This is your port finish buoy, your starboard finish buoy. I'm trying to hurry up here. And 151. We'll see how this works out. Uh, negative 
527. Save changes. Um, go back to parent. I don't really want to make this public. Um, it should show up on my my game only. If I make it public, it'll show up on everybody else's game. I want to make sure it only shows up to my game um, without making it public first. So we'll go check that out. Uh, sail away. Activities. You go to races. You go to player created races. As you can see, if I scroll all the way to the end here, these are the races I made: the Lake Ontario 300 Challenge and the Scotch Bonnet Light Race. Uh, all right, here we go. So, Test Race Sydney. For some reason, this is the default pitcher uh, J24. Is my pitcher of Ron Swanson did not show up. I do not know why. But only I can see this. I did not make it public, so we can go ahead and hit play. Yes, teleport to the start line, and we'll start a practice race whenever the time allows. Um, if we go to our map, kind of check this out. You can check out the course. So I almost got it spot on as far as the windward leeward. The wind's a little bit offset here. Um, but you go around this mark here, down the downwind mark, and then back up. It's a little offset. It looks like the start line's a little offset. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool. And that's all we did was type in a few lead to longitude numbers and uh, using Windy. And uh, that's the start line over there in the dotted red line. And if we start a practice race, it gives you like a minute countdown. Um, the real race doesn't start for 23 hours, but we're just going to kind of lollygag around here. I got a couple of videos I want to show you about racing tactics, and then we're going to go over some other things, uh, well, racing rules and racing tactics, and then we'll come back here and use this starting line, this fake race that I just made, to kind of demonstrate a few of those things. Uh, you know, a few of those racing tactics and racing uh, racing rules at the start of the race in particular. That's why I wanted to kind of make a fake course here in order to use the starting line as an example. It's a big starting line. It's kind of hard to get a smaller one because you usually have the same latitude and longitude um, figures if you shorten it a little bit. Uh, you'd have to get into some serious decimals in order to shorten the line to where you would want it. But this is the average size so far in this game of a start line. But anyway, without further ado, let's go watch some of those videos on sailboat starts, uh, you know, race starts. Um, so first off, I got a couple of videos here I want to show you just how a sailboat race is started and what people do to start one. Um, it's all about timing on distance and trying to stay out of the way of other boats and using the rules in your favor. Um, we'll go over the rules later. Right now, we're kind of just going to watch this to start with, and I'll do some commentary over what these guys are doing. This is in the uh, North American J24 Championships. And uh, kind of see what a, what a race start is like on average. So right now they're just they have their eye on the start line. They hear the the radio on the radio from the uh, race committee what the countdown is. They're probably about under a minute right now. And uh, you see their sails aren't trimmed in all the way. They're not getting the most power out of the boat right now. They're just kind of luffing things. They're kind of stalling the boat out to make sure they do not get up to the line too fast. Because if they know they got 50 seconds left before the start of the race, they don't want to get there until the gun goes off. Um, he's also looking out for other boats because these guys over here, where my cursor is, they can push him off the line and luff him right now because he does not have an overlap on him. So this guy right here can pretty much, he's, he's already coming up in front of their bow and he's pushing up on him to get this guy that we're watching to come up a little bit. Now he can almost do the same thing to these guys over here because they are broaching right now, which we'll get into uh, when I get into some more detail about starts. You can see the committee boats up here. And these guys, this blue boat over here is not on a very good line. So he's kind of squeezing them up a little bit, making sure he stays clear of these guys low of them. And then he gets the okay from his crew that he's good on the line. He's going to start right at the gun. This person up here, this lady up here on the bow is kind of watching the line, the invisible line, making sure that he doesn't cross over it too early. And now they're trimming everything in. They got the start gun right there. He's trimming everything in, getting the boat powered up. And he got a really good start. Now he's uh, he's windward of these guys that were low of him, uh, low of him. So now he's giving bad air that's coming off the trailing edge of his sails to those guys. Uh, number 16 over here, 
doing pretty good. You just saw his bow over there for a second. But that's what a basic start is like. Pre uh, pretty hectic, a lot of boats around you, and you're just trying to make sure that you abide by the rules and get the best start possible. Uh, make sure you're not across the line early. A lot of people end up being across the line early, and that really sucks because you got to do a 360 and go all the way back across the line. And that's pretty much race over. Um, I guess another video we can show you is the Star Sailors League. Uh, they get about 1 minute 16 seconds before the start, and you can see how they're not moving at all. Most of these boats, they're just letting their sails out. And this is your line right here. You see that orange mark and this committee boat right here with the orange flag. So that's an invisible line you want to draw right there. That's the one minute. But you can see these guys are just scouting up the line. They're luffing their sails. They're not, they're not powered up at all. They're trying to make sure that they get a good start and get in a good position on the start. Usually this is very um, precise and tricky control over the boat to try and get a really good start in racing fleets like this, one design fleets like this. You see these boats over here, they went too far over, so they're not going to be able to make this mark, so they're in trouble now. Yeah, all the boats over there are not really good. You see now, with 10 seconds left, they're behind this invisible line. Watch them start speeding up here. You can see how fast all these boats accelerated. You can see how quickly they powered up their sails and took off when they realized they had enough room to get on the start line at the right time. And a lot of the time, this is where you lose or uh, win a race at the start line. But yeah, that was pretty cool. Anyway, um, now pay attention to the rules for sailboat racing. There's Hi, a lot of them. Welcome to our rules of sailing for start racing. We're going to basically look at when boats meet. And we're not going to look at all the rules. We're just going to look at rules 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 18. The rules are very complex. There's a lot of situations occur on the race course, as you can see here, many times when boats can meet. So now we're going to start and look at rule 10. This is when a boat on a port tack must keep clear of a boat on starboard tack. Here you can see the red going under the green. The red can also tack. It doesn't necessarily have to dock. It can also tack with the starboard tacker. This also applies going downwind. So now you can see the green is on starboard. Red must keep clear, so it has to jibe to keep clear of the green boat on starboard. And again, also going downwind, the green boat is on starboard. So the red boat can now go behind if it wishes. Next we're going to look at rule number 11. So what is rule 11? It's on the same tack overlapped. Here you can see the red is overlapped green. Green must keep clear but red can't luff. Now red breaks that overlap and now because green is coming from behind, red can luff up to head to wind. So downwind it's the same, green passes to windward, red can take green head to wind. But if green passes to leeward, now red must keep clear, but green can't luff. Now we're looking at rule 12, on the same tack not overlapped. Green must keep clear because they are clear astern of the red boat. So green must keep clear. 
Next we're going to look at rule 13. Tacking. A boat is tacking once it passes head to wind and ends up on the new tack. So let's look in action. Here you can see the red boat is luffing and is now tacking. And green boat did not have to keep clear but did to avoid contact so red was in the wrong. And that brings us to rule 14, which is avoiding contact. The same here applies. Green avoided the contact, even though they were in the right. And the same applies on a port and starboard. Here you can see the red boat is on starboard. The green boat didn't see them, but the red boat avoids contact. The green boat will be disqualified. Next, we're going to look at rule 18. 18 is complex in a way that this is about going round a mark. Here you can see green enters the zone and red has an overlap. So red is entitled to room between the green and the mark. Here you can see again green is approaching the zone. Red does not overlap. So now is not entitled to room at the mark. So must go behind green. There is a lot of variations in rule 18, but this is the basic rule 18. There is other rules that you need to look at, but they're the basic rules for your start racing search. So the best thing is look over them again, and then once you get the hang of those, the others will start to fall into place. All right, so let's get rid of that. Uh, yeah, this looks like a children's drawing. But anyway, I kind of want to go over a few rules, um, in particular two of them. Rule 18, like we were just talking about, with the mark roundings and who has right away, as well as a race start. Uh, race starts are very complex. Um, so you kind of see I have the wind direction. Usually a race start is right into the wind direction. So obviously, as you should have seen in my uh, previous videos uh, for beginning sailors or for advanced sail trim, um, you cannot, with a sailboat, sail directly into the wind. Oops, I don't know why I hit the wrong button there. You either have to go this way or this way. You have to zigzag. And because you have right away on starboard tack, most people start coming in like this. Um, however, let me draw this in purple. You kind of have the invisible line. And you really have to know your stuff to know where this invisible line is. Um, but this is pretty much as high as maybe you can sail into the start line area uh, depending on the wind direction this is the highest point of sail is your invisible line right here uh, there's something called broaching or breaching not broaching I'm sorry and that's when uh... yeah I don't know why I said broaching <laughs> I don't want to broach I want to talk about breaching uh, breaching is when a boat is coming in like this and they are on the outside of this invisible purple line which is the right away line if there is a boat that is coming up here and they're inside of this line, they have rights over a guy coming in breaching on this part of the line. Uh, the reason why it is because it's really unfair for boats to be breaching. Tons of guys do it at my yacht club. It's really fucking annoying. Everybody pretty much does it at my yacht club. And I think since I'm a new boat owner, I'm just going to come in with the tactics of being inside this line and push everybody off the committee boat uh, <laughs> just to piss people off. Uh, as you saw in that, the videos you know uh, that I showed you, those Star Sailors League, for example, they were all sitting in this area, luffing and waiting to pull it like a trigger on a shotgun. Uh, just as soon as that gun went off, they trimmed their sails and took off like a like a rocket. Um, a lot of boats that ended up in trouble were coming over in this area, and they got on the other wrong side of this invisible line and had no rights over anybody that's in here. Um, so that's the trouble is racing is all full of invisible lines uh, pretty much um, but yeah with a minute to go you kinda wanna make your way into here and start luffing your sails I'd fall off a little bit like I'd do a track like this and try to really start in this section of the line right here that's where I want to start um, depending on if there's any advantage to being on port most of the time there's not, but sometimes I've started on port and have made out over the rest of the fleet and actually crossed the front of all the starboard tack boats. But that's a that's a rarity. Um, so anyway, if there is a boat breaching and they're coming in like this, 
and say I'm sitting here luffing, and maybe there's like 29 seconds or something like that left before the race, and you got to remember this is your invis invisible racing line right here, start line. I can turn up and really luff my boat into the wind and push these guys off. Now, what that does is that blocks them out from getting in here, and uh, obviously they'd have to avoid hitting the committee boat, the race committee boat, and they'd have to do a 360 and come back in behind me when I'm already well on my way and the gun's already gone off. And uh, and that's one thing you can do to breaching boats on the start line. Uh, the other thing, if you got two boats, say there's one here and there's one here, say I'm this guy, I cannot really luff this guy because we're overlapped. Um, I mean, I can scare him to death, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, you know, we're both inside the lines, and uh, you really have to be outside of overlap, which would be up here. Um, and f your stern would have to be in front of his bow, essentially, in order to turn up and luff him towards the committee boat. Um, so that's the thing. With starting a race, you want to come in here and luff and then fall off, luff and fall off, and just keep things clear. Try to keep a clear line. Um, I had a, a start... In my, well, it wasn't last year because we were flooded, but it was the year before where we came in like this and we were luffing and we fell off. And uh, I probably had like four other boats around me within touching distance. I could have reached out and grabbed these guys. You know, that's how close we were. And, you know, with the invisible line, we pretty much for 20 seconds, we just, we did this. And luffed and then came down, luffed and came down, luffed and then took off. And that was pretty crazy because you got a boat in front of you that, coming down, coming up, coming down, coming up, and you're just trying to steer with him and make sure you don't hit him. But my my bow almost swung into the guy several times. Uh, the other thing with a race start, when you're coming in, you just got to watch out for any boats that are in this area because they might have an, uh, be clear of overlap on you and they might try to luff you up. But other than that, just try to get a clean start, try to get in clean air. Um, most of the time it's going to be in this zone right here. Uh, unless there is any kind of advantage over here, but most of the time it's not. Uh, the other rule... Yeah, yeah, lots of erasing. Would be the uh, rule 18 that went over. So say this is your mark. I um, guess we'll make an invisible go zone here. Again, more invisible lines. And uh, it's all boat length, I mean you got to figure if you're racing against a 29-foot boat, well, what's 29 feet from the mark? You know, is this 29 feet? Then that's what the invisible line would be. It's a boat length, basically. So if you're coming in and say the wind, this is a windward mark, so say the wind's like right there, and you need to round this way. So let's see. I'll make my boat green. Or no, we already have a green boat. We'll make it dark blue. So there's one boat... And here's another boat. Wrong fucking way. So as we went over, out here, outside of this, if we were just sailing towards each other, I have right away because I'm on starboard tack, which means the wind is coming over the right-hand side of the boat. And uh, so he'd have to duck me or whatever. Anyway, um, but as far as buoy room is concerned, if he gets into this zone first, zone... I have to be able to give him room to get around this mark, and then I'd have to come around on the outside of him. If I got in here first and he starts calling for room, he'd be screaming room at me. I can scream back at him. No room. If I knew that I was the first boat to enter this zone, I could then cut him off, and he'd have to duck in behind me and come around the outside. So that's what Rule 18 consists of, either downwind or upwind. It's the same thing. Um, so, let's teleport back here. Where the hell's the start line? Okay. I'll see it. So we'll just head over in this direction for a minute before I show you something here. Um, where are we at, main sheet? I'm not going to bring the jib out yet here. Well, maybe we are. In 
get moving here with this video. And chip sheet. So I'm heading towards the uh, favorite star of the line, pretty much, like I said. Instead of a buoy, there would be a committee boat on this side, and the buoy would be down there. So we're just going to head down here for right now. So if we look, as I go on a reach, let me get the view up to the top of the mast. So we're kind of looking down the start line here. Pretty big start line, but you get the picture. Your invisible lines, like we were talking about with the right away lines, would be something like along this direction here. Any boats that are coming in like this where my cursors are, they're breaching and you can push them off, yada yada yada. Um, Breachers just piss me off. I, I used to race for somebody that did a lot of breaching and it was kind of frustrating to be on that. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to start a practice race that gives me a countdown of about a minute and four seconds. Now what I'm going to do... I'm going to luff, which is litting out my sheet. You can see the jib sheets flopping all over the place, the, or the jib sails flopping all over the place. So I'm going to tack over here. So the committee boat's right here. I'm breaching right now. I'm not within those invisible uh, purple, like I showed you in the demonstration, those lines. So I really need to fall down and get into those lines they have right away over anybody. Um, I'm going to leave my mainsail in for right now. Just run the line. But I am going to keep my jib luffing right now. So we got 26 seconds. Now that I'm within the line here, if I had achieved overlap on somebody and they were breaching over here, I would basically just push them up by steering up into them and this would push them off that way. But we're going to be late because I just showed you that and I'm luffing like crazy. <laughs> Five seconds. Yeah, I got to Not the best start because I showed you how to luff there, but oh well. So I'm tightening everything in just like you saw in that video with the J24. And powering yourself up. Backstays tightened, everything gets trimmed up here. And we cross the line. So that's how you would start a race, basically. Not the best demonstration in the world, but... Like I said, it's all timing on distance. you got to get out there and practice and kind of know how fast your boat is. Um, luffing is your best friend, obviously. You want to lift the sails out to slow down. And uh, there's no brakes on sailboats, so you got to learn how to control the sails to make yourself that much more maneuverable. Um... Nothing much else to really go over. Uh, I'm not getting into the advanced racing stuff. I could make another video if you guys want me to about like more like more of the rules and stuff like that. I only wanted to go over a few of the rules, the most important rules, uh, as you saw in that video. It was obviously uh, port starboard. I'm on a starboard tack right now. Why? You should know this by now. The wind's coming over the starboard side of the boat. So if there's another boat coming at me like this, they'd have to duck behind me. Or do a lee bow situation. Lee bow situation is when they attack at the po very last possible second and uh, avoid collision. If I have to alter course at all, if I get scared and see that they might hit me and I come up at all like this right now, say I'm coming up and I'm luffing, I can protest them. I could raise the red flag and protest and they'd end up having to do one of these bad boys, one of the 360 or something. Like a 360 penalty turn, which costs you a ton of time in a sailboat. As you can see how slow and agonizing it is as I'm doing it right now. Oh, it's just terrible. I mean, we're just going downwind now, jibing. Obviously, this cost you a ton of time. And then you have to tack back through it. And by the time you do a 360 penalty turn and you're back on your proper heading, I mean, you've lost hundreds of feet on the person that you penalize, or, uh, that protested you or whatever. 
So it's very important to keep a lookout at where everybody is, and uh, that's why I usually have one person that's designated to, to do that for me. You know, if I'm looking out on one side, I can't see the other side. You know, if I'm sitting up here, I can't see over there. If I'm sitting down here, I can't see over there. So that's why you always have two eyes outside of the boat and two eyes inside the boat. In my philosophy, you got two trimmer, two guys that are focused on trimming and two guys that are focused on racing tactics and steering the boat, um, at least. So. So yeah, this this video, um, like I said, I might make another one. So we had the beginner's video, introduction to sail away, and had the more advanced sail trim video. Um, I did write it in the comments in my advanced sail trim video. I did not go over it, and I forgot until the video was already published. This boat does not have an activated uh, boom bang on board, so I did not go over that in the advanced sail trim video, and a lot of people are probably like, hey, what about the boom bang? Well, I did write it in the comments of that video, but I forgot to go over it, obviously, because this boat doesn't have a boom bang. I do not use boom bang when I'm going windward. Uh, the boom bang to me is completely useless when you're going windward because it would be mounted about here, and it, it, it helps control the boom. It pulls it down towards the uh, the deck of the boat or it lets it off. Um, however, upwind you have your traveler and your main sheet, and with both of those you don't need a boom bang. Uh, you can tighten up the boom with your main sheet by pulling it down all the way, you can put tension on it, and you don't really need a boom bang. The only reason boom bang is important is for when you're going downwind, maybe wing on wing, or even with the spinnaker out, the tail edge of your boom, usually in those cases, because you've lit the main sheet off, a lot of times your boom will be flopping up really high up in the air, so instead of a nice angle kind of like this, it will be up here. That's what the boom bang is for, is to pull that down when you're going downwind. So, to answer anybody's questions about that, no, I do not use a boom bang when I'm going upwind. It's usually completely taken off the uh, the cleat, or the uh, the cam cleat in my case. And uh, I do not use it whatsoever going upwind. We will use it going downwind, though, and that's what it's used for, is to keep that boom down and tensioned while we are wing on wing or with a spinnaker or whatever. So, I want to make sure I, I clarify that. Um, like I said, upwind, traveler, main sheet, that's all you need to control everything. Um, you know, make sure you have your jib tracks in the right spots um, before you tension the sail in on that side, otherwise you're going to have fun. Uh, we're usually always making adjustments depending on wind speeds and wind shifts, or, you know, the shifts in the wind speed. Um, but, you know, we'll make an adjustment on this side, on the starboard side, when, when the the sail is sheeted in on the port side, or vice versa, because obviously once you have the sail sheeted in over here, there's a ton of tension on this block, and you can't really move it anywhere. Um, other than that, yeah, I went over everything. Um, like I said, I might make another video with some more racing stuff. We'll have to see. I'm looking forward to just getting into racing again in this game, so I'm doing leg four of the Volvo Ocean Race here shortly, and... Uh, Look forward to some videos from that, and maybe some other games as well. Um, I've been playing a lot of other games recently. In the wintertime, there's nothing to do, so... Uh, leave a like, subscribe, let me know if you want to see anything else. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.